Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to set up iNav Radar. So you may have heard about this thing that's been around for a, a fair while now and it's called iNav Radar and what it does is give you the ability to see other planes that you're flying with in flight. For example, you're flying with your friends, you want to know where they are in the sky, which if you've just tried to find people, even if you are saying, you know, I'm by, you know, this landmark, it's still quite hard to actually find people. And what iNav radar does is show you the direction they're in and I think it also gives you an altitude so you can sort of try and match up and find your friends. So what we're going to do is have a look at the hardware that we need and get it flashed up and ready to install in a plane. So what is iNav radar? Well it's basically one of these boards which is an ESP32 development board with a LoRa module built onto it and some firmware. So let's have a look at the board. I'll leave a link in the video description uh, for getting the boards. They, the guys uh, from iNav Radar actually recommend getting these specific boards. There is a slight choice in that you can choose which frequency you'd like to use. So uh, this is uh, an 868 megahertz. You can also use 915 or you can use 433 megahertz. But I've gone for the 868. It doesn't interfere with control links, so there's no problem there. So what do we get? Well, you can see already we get an antenna, this tiny little rubber ducky, um, a UFL, which is an IPEX-1 to is that SMA or RPSMA, one of the two, <laughs> um, connectors, and, and little, yeah, little rubber ducky antenna. So you get that, you get a little power cable, which I'm not actually going to use. So I'll put that to the side and you get the module and some pin headers. So this is what we're really interested in. Of course, we need an antenna, but it's an IPEX one. So I'm actually going to potentially use my Crossfire antenna on here. I've got loads of uh, floppy ones. It'll probably perform better than these. These are not supposed to be tuned overly great. So just using the Crossfire antenna will probably be a good uh, improvement so this module it as i say it's an esp32 based module it has an lcd screen and it has lower chip which is why you have the antenna it also has usb so it's nice and simple to connect up to your computer so it's nothing really overly daunting there even if you don't know how to program these things it is very straightforward and the instructions are available online again i'll put a link into that but i'm going to be taking you through it now so the first thing that we need to do is download some software right so the first bit of software we're going to download is the actual iNav radar firmware itself this is the thing that you may want to update to a newer version at a later date I will give you the link uh, because this Dropbox keeps sort of changing. So I will give you a link that will just go to the, the correct place. Um, and what you want to do is choose the latest version. So the latest version is 2.1. So we'll click on that and then you'll choose which actual module you have, whether you have the 433 megahertz version, 868 megahertz or 915 megahertz. So um, I'll be choosing 868. And then all you need to do is click this download button up here and it will download. So that's all we need to do for that. Next up, we need to download a tool to actually put the firmware onto the ESP32 itself. So again, I'll put this link in the description. I did have a little problem getting to this site the first time, but after sort of trying again, it worked fine. And all you want to do is download this uh, flash download tools here. So again, just save the zip file to your desktop and then we can take it from there. Okay, so here we have our two zip files that we've downloaded, which is the uh, firmware for our specific uh, ESP32 LoRa module. So all we need to do is extract that. So there we go. And again, with this, all we're going to do is extract it. So there we have our two folders. Now, what we're going to do is enter the flash download tool. And 
go into the flash download tool folder and you want to run this flash download tool executable file don't worry about this uh, warning just run it anyway it's absolutely fine and then what you'll get is this little question box pop up what you want to do is set this to esp32 and the work mode you want to have as develop then click ok and it will continue to load the tool so now that the tool's loaded we need to just select the files that we want to install first so click these three little dots here and navigate to the desktop wherever you extracted the zip file to and then find the esp32 radar um, whatever frequency you're using and the first file is bootloader now the number one two three four five is actually the order we need to put them into this flashing tool so we'll go bootloader first then open then default then boot app then firmware and finally fs and now what we need to do is give these uh, files addresses to write them onto the ESP32. So don't worry about what the numbers are, they're just hex values. But the numbers that you need are 0x1000, 0x8000, 0xe000, 0x10000. And finally, 0x291000. And then make sure that you tick these boxes here. And finally, we, we turn this off. And then we want 40 hertz DIO 32 megabit. And then that's absolutely fine. So next up, what we want to do is plug in our esp32 into a standard micro usb which is you know plugged into your computer as normal so i'll put that down over there and now we should be able to select the com port so this one is on com6 it won't be on com1 it's very similar to inav if it says com1 that's not going to be your um esp32 so we want com6 in this case and for the board rate, we're going to choose 921600. Once we've got to that point, we can click start and it will start writing the, uh, the, the bin files to the ESP32. So you can see the progress bar here. Once that goes across, it's, it's done. Right, so there we go. It's not very obvious, but it says finish in this box here. Once we're there, we can just unplug the ESP32 and that's it done we can close all this down and then let's head back to the desk right so if I plug this in now after flashing it what we will see I don't know how well this will show up on the screen is we now have INAV radar version 2.1 at this point it's looking for a flight controller it's obviously not going to find one because there's not one attached so it's got no uh, FC but you can see it's running so at this point if we had another uh, ESP32 we would get more nodes but I'm going to disconnect it because I've not got an antenna uh, attached so that's it as far as getting the firmware on there so how about hooking it up to our flight controller so this here is the module it's you know pretty straightforward and the nice thing about this one is on the back it's actually got screen printed port numbers and what we actually want is on this side here so if i turn it up the other way we're going to want to hook up a ground the next pin along is five volts so pin 17 is the RX on this UART and pin 23 is the TX. So obviously on the flight controller, 23 will go to the RX and 17 will go to the TX on the flight controller. So that's all you need to hook up is, is basically 17, 23, 5 volt and ground. And that is your UART connection. So what we'll do is we'll wire that up and then we'll have a look in INAV what we need to set up. So thanks to the magic of YouTube, here is my ESP32. You can see I've run some wires here. And I'll show you what I've got on the flight controller. So this end, 
it's literally just this cable you can see the order is green blue black and red and that corresponds on the flight controller to r1 t1 ground and 5 volts so you're just hooking up to a standard uart so let's fire up configurator and plug the flight controller in right so we're at inaf so let's just connect up and all we really need to do on here is two things the first is go to the ports page and on our UART that we've connected INAV radar to, we need to turn MSP on, which on the F405 wing, it already is. The next thing you need to do is make sure that this is on 115-200. If it's not, it won't work. Uh, so that catches people out. It caught me out. So just make sure that's on 115-200 and MSP is turned on. Then save and reboot. So another thing that we optionally would like to do is just make sure that we have a model name now it's the first three characters that are going to show up on the radar so yeah you'd set it to what you want but it's only really the first three characters that are going to count and finally what we need to do is go to osd and you can still set your osd up how you like but there are a couple of things that you need to make sure that are set up so you need to make sure that crosshairs is on and they recommend to use crosshair type 6. Uh, there are a list of OSD CLI codes, which I will, of course, link in the description to those codes, so you can put those on and set it up as they recommend. But what we can do now is plug in. Okay, so because I've only really got this one, we're not going to see an awful lot, but if I plug in, you can see now that it's connected to INAV 3.1, uh, that's what this is running we have my name we have we're running inav and we have one node out of four so that's a total of four inav radars that can connect up to each other and this is number one so it's signified by slot a so i thought i'd leave it a bit and then you can see that the satellite count has increased we have a 3d fix so it is compute communicating with inav so next up I thought I'd plug in the second module just to see how the two interact a little bit. So this will of course fail to find a flight controller. But it should find the other module. So yeah, you can see that the number of nodes has increased to two. So both of them are showing two. This is now in slot B, this is slot A still. Uh, it's given it a standard, uh, a random free character name, so due in this case. Uh, but you can see that they're both talking to each other. So if this was hooked up on a flight controller with obviously GPS lock, then they'd be able to see each other and it would show on the OSD. So there we go. I hope you guys found this video useful. Please. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and like, subscribe and click the bell icon, all that stuff if you did. And it will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to install iNavRadar too. Thank you very much guys. Fly models like you stole them. See you on the next one.